This is how I built my treadmill speed controller for less than $30 complete. Well hello and here today on the Rusty Glove Box what we're going to do today is I've acquired a, a treadmill motor a while back and it did not have the control board with it. I think that's why the motor was available. Well here's a shot of the motor. It is a hundred and thirty volts and uh, it is a counterclockwise rotation. Two and a half horsepower. Something that I liked about this motor, uh, this flywheel is put on with a set screw and a keyway. So I'll be able to get this off uh, depending on what project I use it on. Well here's a very common little speed controller. This one that I have is uh, 10,000 watts and so it's pretty big as far as uh, speed controllers go. That this would be but because this is AC uh, I need to convert it to DC power but this will get me the variation that I need. One thing that I'm gonna have to change on this is uh, gonna be the little rheostat. And this one is a uh, 200K rheostat. The one that's in here is a 500K rheostat. And uh, it probably would be easier for me to show you why I need to change it out than explain it. Well here I wanted to show you my power cable and how you uh, connect it to the speed controller. What I've done is gone ahead and soldered these in so it'll make a nice connection. I've made a little jumper lead off of the common cable and this is your power cable for your 110. This controller, it has the capabilities of using 220 so if 220 is your current that you most commonly use uh, it'll work with it also. All you'll do is stick that in that terminal. Till it's snug. This is my neutral or common and I look on this and it has common terminal here and it goes to the end. And I'll tighten it down also. All right, I've changed colors on us here. This is my blue lead. You could make it any color you wanted, but here in the center, of the speed controller is the out terminal. I'll put it in that slot, tighten it down. And so basically that's our connections. I have a uh, ground off of my electrical plug and I'm going to go ahead and ground it to the body of this heat sink. Well this is my bridge rectifier and it's going to change the AC current into DC current by using a, a diode in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire that's going to be controlled. It decreases or increases the amount of voltage going in to the bridge rectifier. I'm going to put it on the AC. And this is my neutral or common wire. And I will put it on the other side. So on your uh, bridge rectifier, as you can see, for the AC, you go from corner to corner diagonally. This is what I've made next, and this is very optional. You don't have to do it. It's uh, supposed to absorb uh, some of the voltage spike whenever you're changing uh, your voltage to your DC motor. And uh, what I got was just this little uh, 
I think it's ferrite ring, cheap. It was like a dollar and a quarter, something like that. I used about oh, two, two and a half foot of just automotive grade wire and wrapped that around. All I had at the time was just the white wire, so I took some heat shrink to indicate which one was uh, gonna be my negative and positive for my DC motor. Well, my motor already had the terminals on it, and so that made it easy on connecting. And what I wanted to show you is the reason why you want to change the little rheostat is when you start turning it, your controller on, and you're watching your motor. I've already moved the switch halfway, and I'm just now, I've moved it three quarters of the turn and I'm just now getting the motor to move. And at the slowest speed, it was at uh, right at 484 RPMs. So, uh, The little controller works really well, but we need to change the rheostat out so you can have more control at lower speeds. We're going to give you a final look. Here's where I've uh, bolted the rectifier to the heat sink to uh, help dissipate uh, any heat that it might build up. I've attached my ground and uh, my cable so I'm not jerking on the wires all the time. So anyway guys, I hope you find that uh, helpful on making your DC speed controller for your uh, treadmill motor. For any number of projects you want to use it for in your shop, you could use it for your drill press, uh, for a small lathe, uh, even building a belt sander. So anyway, we'll see what develops with this and uh, I'll be thinking about what I'm gonna use it for. So as always, I appreciate y'all coming by the shop. This is Rusty Glove Box. And I'm out of here.